Hey, I'm Chris, developer evangelist at Mapbox. Today, I'm going to show you how to do some reverse geocoding in your Snowflake environment using the Mapbox Snowflake native app. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at what geocoding and reverse geocoding are. As you're probably already aware, Mapbox is a full location platform. Uh, we have uh, map rendering, search, navigation, and even some data products, some of which are listed here in Snowflake uh, for you to use. Um, but today, we'll be doing geocoding and reverse geocoding, which fall under uh, the umbrella of search. Um, so check out our search offering. We also offer a, uh, a places search um, and other ways to augment your um, spatial applications with uh, search functionality. Um, but today, obviously, you're interested in, uh, as a Snowflake user, interested in uh, bulk geocoding and reverse geocoding. This slide explains what geocoding and reverse geocoding are visually. Um, so geocoding is taking a human readable address uh, or an address string or a, a series of parts of an address, like you know, uh, street name, city, state, and zip code, et cetera, uh, turning that into a point coordinate uh, that you can actually put a, a dot on the map or you can use to um, calculate distance from other points, things like that. Um, today, we're going to be looking at reverse geocoding, which is the opposite. So uh, you already have the coordinates, latitude and longitude, to make a point. And you actually want to know what the, the street address or the human readable address is of that point. Um, so we're going to reverse geocode longitude and latitude coordinates and come up with uh, human readable addresses. All of this is powered by the Mapbox Geocoding API, which we've abstracted and built into the Mapbox Snowflake native app so that you can access that API directly from your SQL queries in Snowflake. All right, let's go write some SQL and do some reverse geocoding. All right, so I'm here in a SQL worksheet here in my Snowflake environment. And uh, commented out here, I've got the function signature of the reverse geocode function in the Mapbox Snowflake native app. Um, you can see uh, the arguments we need to pass in are the longitude, the latitude. Um, quick note, those usually go in uh, longitude, latitude order for anything in the Mapbox ecosystem. Um, so a lot of times people like to do things in lat long order. Um, so just make sure you get the right fields when you are calling this query. Uh, there's also country, language, types, and worldview. All of those are optional parameters, so we don't need them. Um, so let's do a quick uh, reverse geocode of a known longitude and latitude. Um, so what I'm going to do is go and find a longitude and latitude of a, a known building uh, whose address I know, uh, and then we'll we'll run it through here in the SQL query. Um, so we're not querying a table, we're just going to hard code the values. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, get the uh, coordinates for the MetLife building in New York City. and. I'm just going to zoom in and find it manually here, but this app you're looking at is called the Location Helper. It's a Mapbox helper application uh, that some of our developers like to use when they're building uh, web maps and things like that. And it'll help you get, you know, bounding boxes and coordinates. So if you ever find yourself in need of a uh, good latitude and longitude to do some testing with, you can come to this app and find it. And I'm zooming in the wrong place because I'm talking to you. Um, so let's move in on the MetLife building here, which is just above Grand Central Terminal. Um, so we'll center right there and grab this center coordinate. Uh, so here's our longitude and latitude. I'm going to copy this without the square brackets because we're not using it in code. We're using it right here in this SQL. Um, so I'll get rid of these nulls in the first two values or first two attributes, or sorry, first two arguments that we're passing into the function. All right, so here's my call. So we're going to say select uh, Mapbox app v1 underscore one. So that's just what we've named it. Yours might be called Mapbox. It all depends on how you installed it. Then we say dot core. Then we say geocode underscore reverse. And we pass in our longitude and our latitude. And we leave the rest of the arguments as null. So let's run this query and see what we get back. So it just hit the geocoding API behind the scenes. And we get back uh, one column with a, a terrible name because we didn't rename it and um, a JSON response. So if we click on this cell in the, uh, in the results pane here, um, we can scroll down and actually see this nested JSON. Um, so it's got things like the confidence, which is null. It's got an accuracy in it. Uh, so it's saying there's rooftop accuracy. Uh, it's got a country code for us, so we know we're in the US. Uh, it's got a district. Um, so district name would be New York County. That's Manhattan in New York City. Um, so we can scroll all the way down, but the, the, the thing we probably want the most all the way down here at the bottom is just going to be the address. So here's the address field. Uh, it's got latitude, longitude, map box ID, and then name. So here's the actual address, 200 Park Avenue. 
Um, and I brought up the MetLife Building's Wikipedia page here where we can confirm uh, that the MetLife Building is located at 200 Park Avenue. Um, so there's our reverse geocode in action. So that was doing it with a hard-coded address. And the next thing we probably want to do before we move on to, to doing this with a table is to extract information from this JSON response. So uh, when you do your queries, you might want to save the full JSON response. You can go look up things in it later. So you might want to save that in your table or create a new table with a lookup value or something like that. Um, but just to give you a quick demonstration of how we can extract uh, those values. So say we only wanted the address field. We don't want to care. We don't really care about everything else. Uh, we can use a with statement for that. All right, so what I wanna do is show how to extract data from this uh, nested JSON structure that we got back in the result. Um, so we can do this by wrapping the original query in a with clause. Uh, so we'll call this geocoder result. Maybe we'll call it reverse geocoder result. Reverse geocoder result as then with parentheses, we're going to wrap this entire statement. So now we'll have a, uh, a table called reverse geocoder result we can query. Say select. Uh, then we're going to say raw underscore JSON, which is the field that contains our raw JSON. Then we use a colon, and we can actually grab whatever properties we need out of that uh, JSON. So uh, if you recall, the name property is what we want. It actually contains the address. Um, so all we have to do is say raw JSON colon name as address from, and then the name of our table that we created in the with clause. So let's run all of this together and we should get a nice single row response with uh, an address column. So we're basically dismissing or tossing out the rest of the JSON response and only grabbing the part that we need. Excellent. And say, for example, you wanted to grab the accuracy, um, you know, we can just add multiple um, multiple fields to our select here and say we want address and say we want accuracy as well. Let's just add a second uh, second field here in the select, so accuracy. So this should get us back a nice two column result. Accuracy does not exist. Ah. Oh, of course, because I didn't include the width. All right, so let's select all this and run it. And now we've got an address column and an accuracy column. So you can pull out the bits and pieces that you need from the JSON response. OK, so now that you are familiar with how to use uh, the reverse geocode function using a hard-coded longitude and latitude, uh, let's actually use it on a table. So, All right, so the Mapbox Snowflake native app comes with some sample data you can use for, uh, for testing out the geocoding and the reverse geocoding. Um, so the one we want to the the table we want to use uh, in the sample data is actually called sample points. So I just pasted in a simple uh, select statement uh, from the sample points table. So let's run that and see what we get back. Um, so sample points table has a longitude and latitude column with a bunch of coordinates in it. Uh, we have no other context for where these things are, um, but we can uh, run a reverse geocoding query using this table. So let's craft that query real quick. Let's do select. Uh, we'll say mapbox app v1 uh, dot core dot geocode reverse. And then we'll simply pass in so let's uh, let's let's select the columns we want. The columns are actually just called longitude and latitude. We're passing those into the function. Um, we're going to say as raw JSON as the column name. And then we'll do a from, which is the sample data table name. So this will actually call the geocoding, uh, the reverse geocoding uh, API. And let's see what we get back. OK, so uh, raw JSON response. So we can click into each one. And we scroll down to the bottom, uh, we'll see. Uh, Upper Great Highway is the name of this one. This one is San Francisco, Oakland Bay Bridge. Um, so some of these are addresses. Some of these are points of interest. Uh, let's scroll down here. Let's take a look at another one named San Francisco. So place formatted also is one that we might be interested in. Let's, let's take a quicker look through all these. Let's see. 
All right, so just like we did before, uh, we're going to wrap this in a with clause, and then we can pull out some parts of the JSON response that we care about. So let's say with um, geocoder response as paste in the original query. And then we'll say select. Uh, we want raw JSON as the field we want to to unpack uh, information from. So we'll go raw JSON dot uh, place underscore formatted. Um, let's also grab the name. So we'll say raw JSON colon name, and we'll grab the. What else should we grab? Let's grab the accuracy. Raw JSON colon accuracy and all this should be from geocoder response which is what we've defined in our with clause and select all of it and let's run it okay so hit the geocoding api and brought back lots of good information for us um, so what i can do to make this a little nicer is to format these column names um, so we'll just call this uh, as place formatted uh, as name and as accuracy. And you can see we have a, a whole selection of different results. Actually, let's just run it again. We'll get cleaner column names. Um, again, use caution if you're geocoding large amounts of data. Uh, but we can see we've got uh, the name. So some of these are actual street addresses. Some of these are just the city. Um, you know, and you can see where we have rooftop accuracy, we're getting a street address. Uh, where we have no null accuracy, we're seeing uh, just the name of like a highway or a full city name, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so there's also parcel. So you see lots of different uh, types of responses we can get. Um, so you can also limit these responses to only include certain types of responses. So if you want, you know, if you know all of your data is just um, addresses, which should be, you know, rooftop accuracy, you can filter for them or basically tell the geocoder uh, to not return anything that doesn't meet those criteria. All right. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you can get started with reverse geocoding using the Mapbox Snowflake native app after watching this video. Uh, also take a look at our quick start and uh, some of the other videos that we've released around this app. Uh, we're also going to be releasing another one about boundaries lookup. So that will show you how to take a point geometry from your data set, latitude and longitude, and then uh, basically look up which boundaries it falls in. So everything from you know country and state down to uh, you know election districts, uh, congressional districts, uh, census tracts and bound and uh, blocks and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's you know global. Uh, so we have a full suite of boundaries for the entire world that that every point can fit into. Um, so we'll see you back for the next one and uh, thanks for watching.